All right, I know what you're thinking. Come on, what really is a determinant? I mean, we got all these complicated algebraic formulae with the plus and minus and this and that, minor what. Let's go back, think about things geometrically. A simple case, two by two determinants. Let's go back and think about the uh, parallelogram spanned by a pair of vectors in the plane. Remember when we thought about those things from cross products? Okay, let's say we have two vectors, AB and CD, in the plane. I claim that the area of the parallelogram spanned by those vectors is the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix you get by stacking those vectors together as columns, so AB and CD, and then take the absolute value of that determinant, since in general a determinant can give you a negative number. We don't want that for area, right? Okay, that's the claim. Why is that true? Well, we can prove that with a little bit of geometry. That might be kind of fun. Let's take those two vectors, the parallelogram that they span, and put that inside of a bounding box, a uh, rectangle in the plane. What are the dimensions of that rectangle going to be? Well, in the horizontal direction, it's going to be a plus c. And in the vertical direction, it's going to be b plus d. And now I'm going to get the area of the parallelogram by subtracting the areas of certain triangles from that rectangle. Now, if I'm a little bit careful with the coordinates of these vectors, then I have enough information. The area of the rectangle is quantity A plus C times quantity B plus D. I have to subtract off the purple triangle's area and then the blue triangle's area. A little bit of algebra, you get AD minus BC. Then pop everything underneath absolute value signs in order to take care of potential minus signs. Okay, that's 2D. What happens in 3D? I claim that the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix is really a volume, or an oriented volume, of the parallelepiped generated by the columns. D do you remember this back from chapter 6? We looked at parallelepipeds, we looked at the scalar triple product. What we were really doing when we computed that was a determinant where you take the three vectors that span that parallelepiped, u, v, w, stack them as columns of a matrix, take the determinant of that, take the absolute value. And this geometric interpretation is great. It means you can permute the columns without changing the determinant in absolute value. Why is that? It's because the volume of the parallelepiped doesn't change. And that is worth thinking about.